In this video, we're going to talk about the sunglasses design that we looked at with solids, but this time we're going to use forms. Hey everyone, this is Matt with Learn Everything About Design, and in this video, we're going to take a look at the sunglasses again, but this time we're going to do this with forms. I've also had the comment or request to do this with surfaces as well, so I'll probably do a follow-up and do that as well. But in this case, I want to talk about how we can do this with forms and what some of the pros or cons might be. So if you want to, you can go to the description of the video and download the data set, which just in this case just contains the two images. So what we're going to do is start a new form, and we have to think about how we want to start this design. Now, there are a couple different ways that we can do this. We want to make sure that, again, the origin is uh, roughly in the middle of the glasses because we are going to use that for symmetry. And then we need to look at our options for creating a new design. Now, when I think about a design like this, there's a lot of curvature that goes along with it. And there are a couple different ways that we could actually go about creating something like this. But it's important for us to think about the reason why we would choose one type of primitive over another. There's probably five or six different ways that we could approach this. We could use a torus, we could use the pipe, we could use faces, we could use planes, we could use cylinders and boxes. Really, we could start with almost any of these. We haven't really started with the torus before. Um, this is actually a unique shape, so I wanna use this one because we just really don't ever get to use it for very much. But that's probably not how I would typically approach this. I would probably either use pipe and create a 3D curve where I need it, or start with a box. But let's go ahead and let's get started with the torus and just take a look. So I'm gonna get started by sketching on the front plane and let's just place it at the origin for now. Make it approximately the right size, let's say about inch and a half, and we'll go with all the default settings. We're not going to worry about symmetry right now because this is going to be just one portion or one eye of the glasses. Then I'm going to box select everything, use modify edit form, and simply just move it over here. I do also want to go into box display mode. I think that's going to be an important aspect of this. Again, it's always going to be easier for us to design these complex shapes in box display. And then as long as you understand some of the basics between box and smooth, how things go back and forth, box display is going to be much easier for your designs. So when we look at this in box display versus smooth display, you'll notice the smooth is quite a bit smaller. And if we go to the intermediate option, number two, alt and two, or if you go to your selection options and go here to the control frame display, what you're seeing is the curvature or the shape inside and the box on the outside. So if you have a hard time visualizing what's happening, you can use this display, which will let you work and manipulate the box display and kind of see what's going on with the smooth display. For an example like this, it might be important for us to do that. And simply because you can see we're creating some pinching that's going on. So when you think about moving things around, think about moving them in groups. So we can take one of these edges, we can use something like soft modification to make very general changes and, and just kind of manipulate things until you get them into roughly the right shape. Don't worry too much at this point about getting the overall shape of the glasses right. Let's just worry about getting things in the right position. And we'll probably take another look at this with another type of uh, another type of primitive and just kind of move things around. Now you will notice when things start to get bunched up, I'm going to go to box display here and hit Alt and 1. When things start to get bunched up like this, they begin to be problematic to the curvature. Now to fix that, I'm going to turn off soft modification. Sometimes you might want to set your pivot point at the at the top corner here, and then maybe rotate these faces around. That could help. We do the same thing over here. We put the pivot point on the outside. And we always want to kind of maintain essentially the same shape. So playing around with the orientation of those edges can be helpful. Sometimes you might find that you don't need as many edges as you have, or you might want to remove some, and you just kind of need to play around with that. Don't worry too much about the nose piece just yet. We're just looking to kind of get this, get the shape roughly right. 
Now, when I say roughly right, it's obviously not even close to the eyeglasses, but we're just trying to get it again in the rough position. Now that we have it from the front, what I wanna do is take the entire thing. I'm gonna rotate it slightly and kind of pull it back. Then I wanna take some of these edges. You might need to double click them. And maybe let's take, let's see what we got here. We wanna make sure that we grab enough, but essentially what we wanna do is hold down the shift key, grab these edges, maybe this one down here, go back to a top view and start to kind of turn this into that shape. So we're gonna to have to move it and rotate it a little bit. Again, this is often easier to see in box display. I'm gonna take this edge, this edge, and probably this one. From the top, we're gonna to move it back. And then we want to rotate it. And what we're looking for is, again, sort of the edge flow that we have here. Now, once we have that, I'm gonna go back to a smooth display and just take a look. So you can see we're, we're kind of, we're starting to get the shape. We're getting it roughly in the right position and we're, we're sort of working on it. What I wanna do at this stage is I'm gonna hide the canvases so we can kind of see what's going on here. Now, as we look at this, box display is gonna be very good for us to help understand the thickness of these sections. So if we wanna kind of reduce some of these, we can scale them down in plane. So I'm going in a single direction. And what I wanna do is if it's at an angle, I might use this one here, which is uh, perfectly in plane, this one here. And I'm trying to get them to be roughly the same diameter. Now it gets a little tricky in the corner here, but then if we take a look at this, now you can see that it's not super thick or super thin in any one area with the exception of this corner. What's going to end up happening is we're going to have to have some additional edges to control this. So before we get too much further, let's go ahead and do that. So I'm going to take that edge, insert edge, both sides. I'm going to put them relatively close. And as I always mention, this is going to create a straight section with the surrounding edges. So what I want to do is take this middle edge and just delete it. It's going to fix that problem for us. And now what we've done is we've created that harder corner without having to really do too much work. Next, what we wanna do is we wanna to start to add or control some edges. Now, this is a little bit trickier, but what we're gonna do is we're gonna select one of the loops that goes around, and we're gonna insert edges. And again, I'm gonna use both just for now. I'm gonna say okay, and just take a look at what happens. We wanna take a look at it in box display because we never want to have that flat section, which means that we're gonna to have to take these edges and do a little bit of movement. So view it from the side and maybe pull it back just a little bit. And we'll have to do the same thing to maybe that mid edge, that the original edge that we had selected, maybe pull it out just a little bit. And then again, view this in smooth display. So we're starting to add those edges. Now, as we're looking at this, you might start to think this is gonna take quite a bit of time to get the shape that we want. And you're 100% correct. This method, depending on the original primitive that you choose, this method is going to take a good bit of time. Now, as I mentioned, we, we never really get to use the shape, which is kind of why I wanted to start with it, but it's obviously taking quite a bit of time. So what I wanna do instead is I wanna take a look at another kind of primitive. Let's take a look at maybe more of an extrusion method of creating this shape. So I'm gonna start with a box. Now I'm just gonna do a box directly on the mid plane. I'm not worried about symmetry right now. I'm just gonna kind of build it however it comes in. And then I wanna move the entire thing over and I'm gonna to start to build out the frame. So I'm gonna put it roughly in the right spot. I'm gonna say, okay. And then I wanna get rid of a couple of these edges. So I'm gonna delete the midline there. I'm gonna delete this one. And essentially what we're left with is a sphere but if we go to box display, it's just a box. We're gonna get rid of this mid and we just have this sort of box shape. This is gonna be much easier for us to work with. Now you might be thinking, why didn't I just do that when I first created the box? Well, sometimes you don't know until you see the shape. And if you take this all the way down to one in every direction, when you get started, it's gonna just look like a sphere. So sometimes you wanna start and see how many you actually need. 
But now we're gonna use modify edit form. I'm gonna scale this down a little bit, take this bottom edge and scale it up. And now that we have this, before I go too much further, I want to turn this into a surface. Now in order to turn it into a surface, I'm gonna take this end face and hit delete. We're gonna do the same thing over here. And now we are just left with those four faces. So we're gonna bring back the canvases and we wanna view this from the top because we are gonna to have to scale this down as well from the top. So I'm gonna move the entire thing to roughly the right position. I'm gonna scale it down a little bit so that the width of this makes sense. And then I'm gonna take these outside edges and I'm just gonna pull them back to where they should be. I'm not rotating these at all. I'm just sort of putting them where I think they need to be on the image. We'll rotate around to the front. And once again, we're just kind of putting them where we think they need to be. So maybe pull that one down a little bit. Now, if you've ever done any modeling in Blender or another mesh modeling program, this is the same approach that you would likely take to create something like that. We're gonna continue to extrude out from here and I'm gonna work my way around the glasses. So I'm gonna double click that outside edge, hold down Alt and just begin to extrude out. Now, as we go around the glasses, I do want to rotate this and I do wanna scale it out as needed. I wanna fill out this area. Now keep in mind, we're looking at box display, not smooth display. Smooth display is going to be inherently different, but we have a fix for that. And we'll talk about that in just a little bit. So once again, double click, extrude, sort of put this where it needs to be. Again, we wanna rotate it. And if you find that you're cutting off some of this curvature, you might find that you need to come back a little bit. We're gonna scale this out. And again, we wanna build out this, uh, this entire shape. Now I'm not gonna to be too concerned with this flat section over here, but I do wanna to continue to sort of work my way down rotate this around. I'm gonna scale this down just a little bit because again, I'm not worried about that flat. I just wanna get the curvature of the sunglasses. This is gonna stay in roughly the correct angle. I'm gonna rotate this around. Another thing you can do, even though we have the entire edge selected, we can move the pivot point to the inside so that when we were extruding, the pivot point stays and we're rotating and scaling relative to that. It makes it a little bit easier. So we're gonna come down, rotate. I don't really need to scale much here, but I will a little bit. I'm gonna pull this over, rotate, scale vertically. And again, just kind of work your way, uh, work your way around the shape. Now, this is, we're only doing this at this point in two dimensions. We're only looking at this from the front, even though we positioned that roughly where it should be. Now, another way that a lot of people like to work is with multiple viewports, and we can do that in Fusion by coming down here and uh, enabling multiple viewports. So if we're working from the front, we can also move things vertically. So for example, let's undo the scale. For example, if we wanna put these in place as we're going along, what we can do is we can continue to, to work in multiple views. It's a little, tricky to get used to. So if you're not used to working like this, then uh, it can be kind of a hard thing to get used to. But if you are, it is possible in Fusion to do that. It just takes a little bit of, um, it just takes a little bit of extra work to make it happen because we are now working with this stuff in 3D. And generally I don't, I don't like to work like this. I like to isolate my designs to a single view. It's a bit easier. But again, some people like to work like this. I'm gonna go back to a single viewport for our design and continue working from the front. So again, we're gonna come over here. I'm gonna reset my pivot point to the inside and continue using Alt to extrude. And come to the inside, rotate and scale. And we'll just keep working around. You kinda of have to play around and get a feel for how many different um, segments you're going to need as you begin extruding is not really a um, there's not really a precise amount uh, sometimes you might find that you you need a few more if you're in an area with tight curvature and if you're in an area that's relatively flat you might find that you need a few less than you think so just kind of play around with it remember you can always add or delete edges so it's it's not like you're you're completely baked into whatever you do here 
And then I'm just gonna get this one roughly the same orientation and scale. And I'm gonna say, okay. So at this point, I did kind of move and manipulate things around a little bit. We have some work to do there. But what I wanna do is I wanna merge these together. Now, keep in mind when we use things like weld vertices, the first point we select is going to move to the second point. So I think that's a bit easier visually to kind of deal with. And then now we've got this completely sort of enclosed section. Once again, we need to do some work in order to get the three dimensions to be accurate. So we'll need to look at this from the top and the bottom. I'm not gonna use the image in this case. I'm just gonna manually move some stuff around until it looks roughly right. And then we can just kind of worry about it. Since I'm not trying to perfectly reverse engineer what we're doing here, I'm not too concerned about it being super accurate. All right, so now the moment of truth. Let's take a look at this thing in smooth display. And it obviously doesn't look like our glasses. Now the reason for that is because in the glasses, we've got essentially some flat sections with rounded edges on them. Now in the form, in box display, we worked really hard to make sure that outside shape was roughly right. What we can do here is we can either add creases and then fill it this after the fact, or we can add edges to help control the curvature. Now either method is gonna be okay, depending on what your design intent is. And let's take a look at both of those. So first, if I double click, I can go to modify and I can add a crease. When I add a crease, when I go back to smooth display, it's gonna keep that edge creased. And if I do the same thing down here, add a crease, it's going to keep those edges creased. Now this can be a great way to design. And if we finish the form, uh, forgot I had that second body in there. If we finish the form, we can now add a fillet to these. You will be limited by the radius of curvature of your design. So if you have any really tight transitions, you might find that the fillet isn't going to work. Maybe a very small fillet is needed for something like this, but that's one way that you can go about this. I'm gonna hide that body and go back into the form, hide that original thing, and I'm gonna uncrease these edges so that way we can see another method. So uncrease those. And there are two tools that I wanna talk about. One is one that we haven't really used much and that's bevel edges. Now bevel edges, typically you would use when you have a crease, but it doesn't have to be a creased edge. If we double click this, what we're doing is we're adding additional segments relative to the edge that we selected. We can pull these in tighter and we can increase or decrease the number of segments that we want. So for example, if I leave this at one segment and I put it relatively close, what ends up happening, if we look at this in box display, is it essentially took that original corner and it put a chamfer, a bevel on it. Now, this is a great option, especially if you just wanna to try to tighten that corner up on your design. So if we do this again, let's go down to our bevel tool. Again, I like to tighten these up, keep them relatively close. And let's add two segments this time so we can see what happens. So when we add two segments, they stay close together, but we have that sort of issue that we want to avoid. The issue we want to avoid is when we have a straight section in the middle. Now we can get away with this in some cases. In some cases like this, it will be okay. Now that's because essentially what we're doing is we're making that tight transition all the way around the model. And we can, essentially we can work with that bevel. Now, if we want to undo that, I'm gonna go ahead and double click on this. And instead I'm gonna use insert edge. We're gonna use both. And we're gonna pull these in, say okay. This gives us a different result. Now, if we take a look at this in box display, the edges are relatively close. However, the one in the middle stays like a corner like we have in box display. To sort of reiterate that, I'm gonna do undo and undo again to show you the bevel. And let's go to modify, bevel, we'll select this edge. Again, we're gonna put them in relatively close. We'll say okay. And you can see that it bevels that edge. Again, undo one more time. And this time we'll do it 
again, but this time we'll add two segments so it better represents what we had with the insert edge. And when we do this, what you can see is that the intermediate edge is in line with the two edges that got added. When we do this with our insert edge, it keeps the original edge in its location, so you end up with a much tighter crease or a much tighter transition. Now, as always, words of caution here. I would avoid using the beveled edge if you are going to have more than one segment when you're using it in this type of a design. If you're trying to get a transition, like a, a rounded corner here, then using the bevel is an okay option. It can get you pretty close, but be careful that you don't try to add too many segments to get a tighter transition because you're gonna end up again with those the same geometry problems that we run into. But that can give you a pretty good result. Now, another thing that's really nice about this is we can do this on the back side as well. You can repeat the beveled edge. Again, I'm gonna tighten these up. I'm keeping them relatively around 0 0.1, 0 0.15. And I'll do it to the inside as well. Again, pulling those close together. When we do this, now this gives us some area where we can add the nose piece. Now, the nose piece is something that was really tricky for us to do with the solids. It took a lot of lofted curves, but when we're dealing with forms, it's not quite as bad. What you end up having to do is insert an edge or potentially multiple edges. And I'm gonna put this right in the middle and then double check my box display because again, we don't want that flat section. So I'm gonna take that entire, uh, that entire section and I'm gonna pull it back just a hair. So I'm gonna select this and just say 0.02 just to pull it back a little bit. And now we can use this to start to build out that nose piece. So I'm gonna pull this back and then take a look at it in smooth display. So you can see much easier for us to begin to create that nose piece by using our forms tools because we can very easily manipulate how this transitions into the rest of the, uh, the body, the surfaces. And if we need a, a wider transition there, it just means that we need to add another edge to help kind of control that curvature. So when we do that, we'll go to our box display and then we'll make sure that in this area, it's essentially flat. So what I mean by that is we wanna take that vertex and we wanna make the peak be a flat section relative to this other edge that we added. So when we look at this in smooth display, now we don't have quite as drastic an edge there. We've got that, that peak. But then again, you do need to be mindful of what this looks like on the rest of your design. And you probably need to pull this entire edge out just a hair as well, just to make sure that we don't have any pinch spots. But this was much easier for us to do than it was when we were dealing with it in the solid body or using surfaces. Now, the tricky part here is going to be connecting this to the rest of the sunglasses. Now, you can take a face like this. You can hold down Alt and you can extrude this out. And it's automatically going to add in the rest of those edges for you. Then if we figure out where the origin plane is, if we do a mirror duplicate, we take this body and we mirror it across here, we can merge these two together and then we can use symmetry. Now, again, it gets a little bit tricky, but if we go to, um, if we say find that inside, let's go ahead and undo this. If we take this inside face and delete it, this makes the process a little bit easier. So we're gonna mirror duplicate this body across this mirror plane. And then we can weld these edges together. So we're gonna to go to merge edge, edge group two. We'll just simply double click these, weld them together. And now we've got symmetry across the midline and we've got the starting point for a pair of glasses. So that process, obviously we started with the Taurus. That sometimes looks like a good option, but as you begin to design, you, you might find that it's a little bit easier to go a different route. There are obviously a couple of more ways, different ways that we could have done this. I think that this method would be the method I would choose to design these types of products. It gives me a little bit more control, it takes a little bit more time because you are extruding each segment, but then work in box display, make the shape that you want, 
then use things like bevel or creasing edges to carry on and continue your design. If you have any questions about this, please let me know. As always, thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.